everyone. Welcome to episode 80 of the Arianids podcast. My name is Ariel and this is a video podcast where I talk about all the things that I have been knitting and spinning on for the past week. And this week was very productive. I have a lot of finished objects. I did a lot of spinning and yeah, I have a fun update for you all at the end of this video too. It's the fiber collab that I was talking about in last week's episode. I finally got my braid in, so I will show you what that looks like. And yeah, let's get started because I think that there's kind of a lot of things to cover in today's video. So today it is Saturday, July 6th. I, again, can't believe that it's already July, um, which is crazy. So that's insane. We're in a new month. Uh, oh. I do want to say, I think part of the reason why I was so productive this week is because I did have July 4th off um, of work, and so I just pretty much spent that entire day knitting as well, and so yeah, that's how I got so much knitting done this week also. And, and the spinning, lots of spinning this week too. Okay, but first, let's talk about what I am wearing because it is also one of my finished objects for this week. I finished and am wearing the Mala Top by Sari Nordland. I knit this using Sorella Classic Sport Yarn in the colorway Brick. I knit size 2. I used US 4 needles or 3.5 millimeter needles to knit this. And final measurements, this is very interesting, uh, final measurements, I have 28 inches in circumference. This gives me two inches of negative ease and okay fit wise I actually like this fit this how it fits on me and how it feels is totally fine I don't usually like negative ease for most of my tops but for this one I think it works however the interesting thing about the final measurements for this was this is even smaller uh, of a size final measurement wise than the size one would have been if I hit gauge. I just really did not hit gauge on this uh, this pattern and I'm trying to pull up right now um, what the actual finish measurements for size two is supposed to be. Size two was supposed to be 37 inches in circumference. Size one is 34.75 inches in circumference and so I followed instructions for size two and I got 28 inches in circumference. So that's a big difference in my gauge. And I think part of it is just the fact that I use a sport weight yarn, which the pattern is written for sport weight yarn. I think the sport weight, I wonder if the sport weight Sari Nordland used just has maybe a different feel to it. Maybe it's sport weight, but is a bit loftier maybe. So it just kind of bloomed a bit more because I think that if I went up way more needle sizes to get gauge on this top, it would just be really loose and holy. Um, right now I think is, yeah, I don't know if you can really tell on camera, but yeah, from far away, it looks, you know, like it's not see-through. But definitely in up close and in person, um, it really, I think that if I use a DK weight yarn, it would work perfectly for this pattern. And so I do think that even though this pattern says sport weight, and you know, again, I haven't used the yarn that Sari Nordland used for her sample for this um, pattern. And this is also another thing when you are substituting yarn for patterns, even if you get a says sport weight and you get a different sport weight yarn, it could act completely different than the yarn that the design and uh, the, the the designer used for their sample for the pattern. So it's always things you kind of need to consider. Um, but I think if you just did, you know, like a superwash DK weight yarn, uh, that it would work fine. Maybe just any kind of standard. I don't know what, what everyone's standards, I guess, are different for a DK weight yarn, but if you use hand dyed yarn a lot, like me, um, just one of those DK weight yarn um, 
weights would probably work fine for this pattern. The good thing is I didn't use fingering weight for this because I think it would definitely be too loose um, trying to hit gauge. So anyway, that's just, that was definitely, like that's a me thing. I did not gauge swatch for this top. So that's totally on me. The good thing though is that it fits me fine, like perfectly. Like if I didn't look at the final measurements for this top, I don't think I would have even thought that there was such a big sizing issue for this. But it does fit more tight. Like there, it doesn't, it kind of hugs. It's not tight, just kind of like hugs. And there's no kind of like loose um, areas, which I think it would have looked cute if it was kind of a bit more if it had just any kind of positive ease. Uh, but I think that this will still work as a top to wear on its own, like how I'm wearing it right now, or maybe still even as a vest if you have like a light long sleeve kind of shirt under it maybe. There is a lot of stretch though, I will give it that. So that's probably why it fits um, and feels pretty okay. So <clears throat> I'm standing up now so you can see how this fits. Uh, the length of this top is like, I would say this is full length. It is not cropped by any means, and that was in the pattern itself. And yeah, so it fits really nicely. I'm trying to stand as far back as I can. I always have this issue because I have a wall right behind me, but this is what it looks like. And yeah, I like it. I love the colors. I really like the entire cable pattern because it does kind of switch up um, in between and across and the all of the edging and the bind off is one by one rib with a tubular bind off and so for the neckline the um, arm holes and also the hem and you can see that for there was no sleeve that was there was no sleeve to pick up a knit it was just pick up the armhole and then immediately like knit the I guess you could count the one by one rib it's kind of like the sleeve but you just pick up do the ribbing and then bind off for uh, the armholes and the armholes fit really nicely as far as like armhole depth I feel like this year has been me kind of really noticing armhole depth on patterns and so I don't know that that's just something I've noticed a lot uh, this year in my knitting and the patterns and stuff like that. So, and I think what's really nice too is that it does overhang a little bit from the shoulders. And I think I actually kind of like that. It looks kind of cute versus if it, it just stopped right at the top. I think, I think that if it stopped right at the top that, I mean, that could also work too. Yeah, like that looks fine, but I think it hanging just slightly over the shoulders kind of gives it that little, like, I don't know, it looks cute like that. It's like a sleeve, but not, not a sleeve that's there. Kind of like a little cap sleeve. Really short one, but I think that's cute. Uh, so yeah, I overall enjoyed working on this pattern. The chart, uh, there were multiple charts just for the front and back and then like main chart for once you join in the round and that was fine. There was just one column that I think was, should not have been there um, in one of the, it might've been like the back panel uh, that I think if you, if you knit this pattern, it was just the part where it gets repeated. There's a part in the chart in the middle that is highlighted in red and it says, you know, repeat this, you know, X amount of times, depending on what size you're knitting. And there's just one um, column that I think you just don't, you shouldn't knit because then it makes the pattern all kind of weird and not work out. So if you have knit um, from a chart before and you know kind of like how to read the pattern as you're knitting um, and to see like what's going on, you you will notice that um so i wouldn't uh, worry too much about it um but 
yeah, I think other than that, like I followed the pattern as is for the length and stuff. For the length, the length worked out, you know, I just followed the pattern to the length. I didn't, obviously my gauge was really off and so I didn't, if there was any kind of like knit however many rows. Um, actually, I think for most Sari Nordland patterns, there is, there, there's always for length of body, you just knit until a certain length. There's not knit this many rows kind of thing, which of course you can change and edit um, yourself depending on what fits you best. So that's not really an issue, but I just wanted to point that out. I'm just talking to you about the pattern. So, um, but yeah, I enjoyed it. I will say at the end, because this is full length and I like the length of it, it's just towards the end because it is cable and bobbles. There's bobbles on this. Um, all around the front and the back. I was starting to get a little tired of it. Um, but that's usually how I get towards the ends of projects anyway. So it's all normal. It all went well. I'd like the finished object. It is now really hot. It's, it's getting hotter now here um, in Seattle. So this felt fitting to wear for the podcast episode today because it doesn't have sleep so that's really nice I'm also noticing that I'm I look really pale for some reason in the camera today maybe just like my shoulders maybe um, or maybe I just like don't really see my arms too much on the podcast so I look kind of strange but I really really like this color I want to knit with this color more of course not you know it doesn't have to be the Sorella brick colorway but very similar colors I would love to keep adding to my wardrobe. I really like it. So that's really cute. Oh, I actually, I really love how these cables and bottles look on this top. It's very cute. Okay, I think that that's all the details I have for this and that's all I want to talk about. So let's move on to my next finished object. This one is the Downtown Hoodie by Tori Yu. I finished it. And I will say all of these, all of my finished objects this week were, they seem like a lot. I think I have four finished objects, but they were all near the end anyway. And so I just, you know, I was so close anyway. I thought I should just finish it this week. Okay, here is the Downtown Hoodie um, by Tori Yu. Yarn I use is Coast to Coast Yarn Classic DK. Main color, the purple, is Earthen, and Cortinarius is the color of the stripes. I knit size 2. I use US 6 or 4.0 millimeter needles to knit this. And I love it. I'm very happy with this. I think it's way too hot to put this on. I'm hoping next week might be kind of hot too but I will put it on and show it to you all in a future podcast at some point it's as I've said it's DK weight yarn and so it's a really like nice not super heavy feeling knitwear but like sturdy like substantial um to keep you warm and I believe from last week where I was I just needed to I think most of like all the knitting on the hoodie was done. I just needed to knit the I cord um, string for the hood, and then I needed to sew down the part where it gets um, where it's attached to the hood, basically. So I did that, and now it's done. It was I was really worried about having to knit the enclosed section of this hood because you do have to I mean of course you can you can do it in whichever way you want but I wanted to follow the instructions for the pattern because I just like to always do that unless I feel like something's going to go very very wrong um, but the instructions for this pattern was to knit you have to knit the I cord first for the drawstring and then the reason why you have to knit first is because you string it through the hole you have in the front two parts of the hood and then you will sew it in enclosed in the hood part and then sew that 
in. And I think what's pretty, and it wasn't hard to do. I was worried about lining up um, where I'm going to sew from kind of like that flap and matching it to the same kind of like row in the hood. Um, but it worked out really nicely. It did kind of feel like it took a while because you have to do that all the way around the hood. But what is really nice about doing it at the same time, like in sewing the and enclosing the drawstring, the I cord, is that you don't have to go through the hassle of stringing through your I cord all the way around your hood just to get it in. You just sew it in and then it's in. Because I don't know if you've done this before, but when you do have to kind of, what's the word I'm looking for? When you have to like string through something through a small tube like this, um, the way that I've done it is that you attach at the end of like, if it was this, you would attach at the end of your eye cord a safety pin so that it's hard um, and easy to move. And then you would kind of like scrunch that through because it's a lot easier to do that and move that around and grab it while it's in inside like this tube thing versus doing it without that and just doing it with something that's really soft and you can't really like grab. Hope that makes sense. Sorry if it doesn't. Um, kind of hard to explain, but yeah. Sewing this down with the I cord in it saves you from not having to, or it saves you from, yeah, saves you from having to string it through. That's all I'm trying to say. Okay, so that worked out really nice. It uh, looks really nice, really clean. Uh, let me show you the close-up of the front here. There is um, kind of like this overlapping section at the front of the hood. And I think that just, it looks cute. But I notice also in my no sweatshirt, which is a different pattern, a different hoodie pattern, that there is also a kind of overlapping section in the front of the hood as well. And so I don't know if that's just like, was that like a just an aesthetic design thing or is there like a technical reason to do that? I wonder if it's because it just might be hard to figure out if you wanted both of the ends to connect in the front and the middle. Like maybe this is just a better way, a nicer way for it to look than having weird like seams in the center in the front. Um, but either way, it looks cute and so I like it. Here's the hood. Oh, and also all of my finished objects were all washed and blocked, so that's also really nice. Um, yeah, so this is, you know, the final product of this. The hood does fit pretty nicely. It's not too tight, but it's also not like overly like massive. Um, and again, I will at some point in a future episode wear this so you can see it. And yeah, it blocked out really nicely. It fits oversized the way that I was planning for it to look and yeah it just looks really cute there's something about like knitted hoodies that just kind of look so cool it doesn't I feel like it's not something for some reason that I immediately think like oh you can knit a hoodie but it looks fantastic it also feels great to wear too and the color combinations on this is so good. I've said this before, but it basically looks like the same colors that Tori Yu used in her version. Um, so I'm pretty happy about that, actually. And yeah. Oh, length of this eye cord. I just followed the length that the pattern says. I was worried that it seemed kind of short. So I do want to point that out. I thought the eye cords were going to be short, but I was like, trust the pattern. Just trust it and I did and it's the perfect length I think to me so yeah and then just for finishing purposes I did tie knots at the end of the I cord just because I think most drawstring things on hoodies do that and it looks cute and maybe just in case one of them gets like yanked that it'll prevent it from um, going through the hole so yeah I think I showed this last time hood was worked with short rows and so you can kind of see that 
from the side it kind of looks like how you would knit the toe part of a sock it's kind of how I see it um, but yeah it's interesting that that's how that's how you can get the shape for a hood a knitted hood so that is my downtown hoodie very excited to wear this when it gets cold I'm just sad it's not cold right now because I would love to wear it I think it's going to be a really good staple piece for me to wear super often like something really easy to put over whatever I'm wearing and so yeah that's I think it's going to get a lot of wear and that's really exciting so okay so that's the downtown hoodie now on to finish object number three of the week this is my vice versa shawl by Bridget I finished it it is washed and blocked it's amazing I love it so much um, Yarn I used is Durum Natura Ulysse in the colorway Door. It is this golden yellow color. And the other yarn I used was my hand spun of the Big Little Yarn Co. Rambouillet fiber in the colorway Satsumaimo Pie, which is not that side, this side. You can see it more. Really pretty different shades of purple, and it's all striped um, because I did a uh, chain ply for um, when I spun the yarn, and so it came out in this really nice stripe striping pattern for the colors. And I love it. This is a two color brioche shawl, and so. And what's really fun is that on each side of it, you can see one half has like one of your yarn as like the main color that you can see and the other side is the other color. And of course, if you flip it, it's the other way around. It's just so fun. So you can see all the colors at once. And I knit size one. This is the smaller size. There is a larger size in this pattern. I use US 3 needles or 3.25 millimeter needles to knit this and I did size down my needles because my brioche is usually really really loose and yeah let me oh I can show you the um, it is very long I did take some measurements of this before filming the podcast and my even though I size down, my shawl is really wide. The wingspan is really long. Um, and the middle spine is just a tad short um, from the pattern measurements. And so I do kind of wonder if that had to do with how I blocked it. Because brioche, I think, blocks... It really kind of depends on how you block it. I don't know about how it works out for you all, but... Brioche has always opened up and gotten super large um, after I wash and block it. And it could be that maybe I blocked it for some reason, like really long. I don't usually, I should have measured it while it was drying and laid out. It probably is what I should have done, but I just kind of like laid it flat. And so this, the wingspan is really long. I think that if I maybe blocked it a little wider like this, maybe it would have helped to cut back on that length a little bit. But it does, the length does not bother me at all. Um, oh, I was going to say, so this is a triangle shawl, but it's not knit like your normal triangle shawl. You can see here the top is flat. It is straight, um, and the bottom has, you know, the... the oh, the longest part here, tallest part, is this middle spine, and then there's decreases on both sides all the way until the end where you can see it just gets really skinny. And if you don't like doing increases on shawls, then you'll love this shawl because you will always be decreasing. You work each half um, one side at a time, and so you start in the middle, which is where you get have the most stitches, and you decrease. Then you pick up and start in the middle and decrease. And so there is no part of this shawl that really feels like, oh my gosh, every row is getting bigger. 
because there is no part of when you're working in the shawl where every row gets bigger. So that has been really nice. Let me drape it over myself. It looks so good. Um, I also love, actually here, I probably would wear this more like this. So I would put this middle part in the front and then drape the rest of it over. Yeah, this is how I would wear it. Oh, it's so cute. I just wish that it was like colder outside so I could actually wear this. I might look like a crazy person if I wore this outside right now. Um, but it's so cute. Oh, it's even long enough where you can probably like tie it. <gasps> that's really cute. Oh, that's so cute. Okay, this is like the perfect length to do that. I feel, and also like the perfect width of the shawl at this point, at like this end to tie it, you know, do it around once and then tie it in the front and for it to not be super bulky, but for it to feel like secured on you. That is so cute. Um, I want to wear this as long as I can on the podcast because it looks so cute, but I'm also sweating now. Um, I love this yarn, and I think I've said this before, but I love the Derrera Natura Ulysse, which is the sport weight yarn base, and also Gilead, which is the worsted weight yarn. I love that yarn, and so I'm really happy that I was able to use that for this um, pattern. Um, as well um, because it's such a great it's it's a wool like when you touch the yarn you're like that's wool but it is not to me it is not scratchy it just has this nice wooly warm kind of woolen feel to it um, woolen spun is that the right like it's very it's a lofty feeling yarn and so it it's airy and light does not feel dense or heavy um, and keeps me warm it is not itchy or scratchy um, and I really like it and also this hand spun Rambouille yarn I have been just obsessed with Rambouille yarn lately both to spin with and also to knit with and so this is like I spun this Rambouille and also knit with it and so it's really really great I think that this combination worked really well together. It's a great pattern to knit with your hand spun because you can really just like play with colors with your hand spun. If you just have, like you can use multiple colors of your hand spun with this because there are kind of like two halves. You can definitely, and I say this because this is my plan for my next one, I want to make the bigger size of this as well that I could do one half of the shawl with um, I'll have one main color throughout and then one half I can use one of my hand spun skeins and the other one I can use another hand spun. So that's another great way to use if you have some like single skeins of hand spun that maybe go well together that, um, you know, because not everyone maybe has, unless you do a combo spin, you know, to do like um, two skeins uh, of the same color. A fiber although okay I will say so okay yarn wise I don't usually say on the podcast I realize like how much yarn I've used for each of my projects um, because usually for the most part unless I either ran out of yarn or I had um, used way less yarn than the pattern recommends it's usually within this you know what the pattern recommends for yardage um, for this one I did have two skeins of hand spun um, the purple yarn uh, for this shawl. However, I was worried I wasn't going to have enough of it to knit the larger size. That's why I knit the smaller size. And for the smaller size, I was like just about to finish. I have like this like small amount left of my one skein of hand spun for um, of this colorway. And so I do for the small size, I almost used a uh, one skein of my hand spun and I know when you are hand when you have hand spun yarn and you're making hand spun yarn for a project it's really hard to say oh you just make one skein because your yardage can be very different from someone else who is spinning the exact same fiber um, and so you know it's 
it's really hard to say, oh, you just need one skein of hand spun, right? Like it really goes down to like yardage and your weight of the yarn that you end up with and um, how dense your yarn is, you know? So it's hard to say, but for me and my hand spun, I only needed one skein of hand spun to knit the smaller size of the vice versa shawl. Um, I was very close though to finishing that one. And so, um, yeah, that is something to just like keep in mind. But for making the bigger shawl, I want to, hoping I can use two skeins of hand spun. Um, yeah, I think, is that everything I have to say? I love this pattern. It's great. I love the size. I love the shape. I love the techniques that are um, in this shawl because it really is a great way to either learn to color brioche if you haven't done it before or just to do just to practice um, knitting uh, to color brioche and to also practice doing brioche decreases in both left and right um, decreases because I think it's one of those that I don't really use or in all of my recent brioche knits, I haven't done one of the decreases and so I had to look up how to do the other decrease. So it was really nice to kind of like get that um, motion kind of going uh, back like in my hands and um, just seeing the colors. It's so good and uh, yeah, I love it. I'm so happy. I can't wait. I say this for everything, but I really can't wait for it to be scarf weather so I can wear this outside or just wear this indoors. I'll just make it purposefully cold indoors so that I can wear this all day. Yeah, it's so cozy right now. Um, just so, so good. Um, I cannot wait to see everyone else's versions of this for the test knit. Oh, and this is, yeah, I think, I hope I mentioned it. This is a test knit, um, and the pattern is in collaboration. Bridget is collaborating with We Chickadee, which, um, for fiber, and there will be a special colorway, um, for Flock Fiber Festival this year. So the plan is for this pattern to be released for Flock so that you can kind of get your fiber and your yarn. Um, La Mercerie. So it's, uh, Bridget, who's a designer of the pattern, We Chickadee and La Mercerie, which is the yarn store in Bainbridge Island and also part of putting on the Flock Fiber Festival this year. Um, I hope I said that all correctly. Um, they're doing this collaboration for this pattern uh, release for Flock, which is really fun. And I love, I love the fiber that We Chickadee is doing. Um, I believe that that fiber will be sold um, from La Mercerie during Flock. Um, I love the color so much. I'm pretty sure I'm going to buy some braids of it. And oh, so Bridget, of course, made her sample, one of her samples using this fiber. She uh, spun the fiber um, and knit a version of the vice versa shawl. Um, so definitely check out her version on her Instagram. Her Instagram is BZB Knits. And she also made a great video on YouTube of her spinning the fiber for this shawl. So if you want to see that fiber colorway that's going to be released with this pattern, um, the fiber by Wee Chickadee, the colorway. It's so pretty. Um, Bridget made a video of her spinning it. Amazing, so good. It's such a relaxing video and you get to see her process of her spinning. Um, it is different from mine's and so it's really fun to just see how other people spin their fiber. Um, definitely check it out. I will. Make sure to link it down below in the description where I have the information for this shawl as well. So definitely give it a look. It's fantastic. Um, and also the fiber is so pretty. The colors are so up my alley. So yeah, okay. So I think that's all I have for the vice versa shawl. And then uh, my last finished object for this week is surprise not surprise because it was the plan i'm still on time for these projects 
the Stella Quilt Cushion, number two. So here is the front. This is washed and blocked. This time I remembered to do this earlier in the week, so it had like two days to dry. This is the front. It looks the same as the one before it and the next three that I will make, but here's the back. Done. This one is green. This is a hand dyed green yarn dyed by me and I think it turned out really nice. Um, there's, yeah, it's the same details for the previous one. I knit the DK weight version of this pillow case. I used US 4 needles, 3.5 millimeter needles to knit this. I believe that that's two sizes down in needle size. And I don't know if I talked about final measurements for my last pillow. This one I did take final dimensions, final measurements for this. I got 17.5 inches both sides for the square, um, which is good because the pillow insert is going to be 20 inches by 20 inches. And so that gives, if the pillow case is a little smaller, that'll make sure that everything is nice and snug because this will ideally have to kind of stretch a little bit to cover the pillow. And yeah, for all of them, I'm going to do this um, envelope enclosure. And so you'll have the opening here to put the pillow. And I just wanted to do that so that you it, it would be easier to clean um, the this pillowcase in case you need to clean it you can just take it off of the pillow or if you ever want to change out the pillow like that's easy to do I just I don't know I felt like it was too permanent to just like so close a pillow in the pillowcase which probably would be fine but there's something about it I don't ever really like things to be super like final although I'm sure you can like you could rip it out you could take the pillow insert out if you wanted to, if you sewed it closed, but it sounds too much of a hassle. So I'm just going envelope enclosure. I'm sure if you're really like handy, you could also like make a zipper um, enclosure, which I think would probably work the best, but I am terrified of sewing um, zipper things onto knitwear. I've done it twice and both times I didn't enjoy it and it stressed me out. And so envelope enclosure it is. So yeah, um, the green color I think looks really nice. I think it matches the pillow, like the colors in the front as well. Like it doesn't look like a super weird color to have for the back of a pillow. And so I'm very happy with that as well. I think that this one actually ended up being slightly smaller than my first version. And I might've talked about this in last week's episode, but I think it has to do with the size of this back portion because it's all knit. Um, you start at this corner and you knit all the way and you increase. And I think I was just knitting really loosely for my first pillow. And so it used up more yarn. Um, that was kind of one clue than this one did for the back. And it also did, you can see for this one, when you see it in the back, that on the edges, there the front part is kind of going over. So meaning that maybe the front is a little bigger than the back because you can't see any of the green in the front like this. But it is the opposite for my first pillowcase. When you hold it in the front, you can see the brown back kind of bordering on the outside. So yeah, I'm hoping that my future pillowcases, my next three will fit more like this one or sizing wise will fit will be more like this one because the other one I think is a little too loose. Um, so yeah, that is my finished Stella Quilt Cushion number two. That means that this coming week is going to be the start of Stella Quilt Cushion number three. Uh, so yeah, I, I enjoy knitting the front way more than I do knitting the back. And so the next two weeks when I knit on the front, it'll probably still feel mostly fun to knit on. I wonder at what point I'm going to get sick and tired of knitting these squares. I hope I don't get sick and tired of it, but I think I, I have to at some point, or maybe just feel burnt out from it at some point this year. 
I hope after I finish the last pillow though, that would be nice. Um, but yeah, okay, I think that that is, oh, I didn't talk about the yarn um, choices for this, just in case it's getting a little too repetitive for you all to hear, but for the front, the main color, this white color, off-white color is actually a, color, a yarn that I hand dyed myself. It's just like a really, really light gray, and so it just kind of gets rid of that yellowness of a bear of an undyed yarn, and I really, really have been enjoying that, or this color, and the rest of the eight colors in the front of the pillow is all Woolberry, Fiberco, Berry Cashmere in eight different colorways from the Anne of Green Gables collection. I have them all listed down below. If you have a question about a specific color, just let me know, but yeah, they're all listed down below. Um, and yeah, I'm knitting different backing colors for each of the five versions I have. And that's, that's it. That's, that's the end of Stella Quilt Cushion number two. Oh, I haven't bought, I told you I didn't, I don't like the Ikea pillow that I bought for my first pillow. I have yet to buy another pillow to try out to see if I like it. So that's a later problem. I'm just gonna keep knitting, um, keep knitting the cushions and I'll deal with the pillow inserts later. Um, okay, so that is all of my finished objects. I feel like that was like half the video is like finished objects, which is crazy. Um, but I'm feeling really good, feeling productive. And so let's move on to my whips for this week. Oh, this one's a fun one. I'm really close to finishing this. Honestly, I think I could have finished um, this tea this week, but I was, I was like, let's cast on other projects instead. But I probably can finish this. I probably should finish this for next week. Ta-da! Oh, it's kind of wrinkled and rolling up at the bottom. This is the Doo Tea by Fiber Tails. And it's actually finally looking like a tea because last time I showed it to you, it just looked like a blob of green, dark green yarn worked in the round. But now it looks like a tea. Um, this is worked bottom up, and it is a v-neck in the front. It's drop shoulder T, and so it's knit bottom up. You split where the arms, um, the underarm, and then you work the front and the back separately, and then you join at the top. The join at the top is really nice. It is a Kitchener stitch, and so it looks very very seamless um, at the top which is really nice I mean you can kind of see it but it looks really nice and I wanted to say oh I for, I'm still wearing this it is now way too hot oh my gosh okay let me take that off okay so I there's a couple things about this that I want um, to talk about because they did give me some slight not issues but just I needed some time to I need to stop and think and do some math um, which is not my favorite thing to do with a knitting pattern but sometimes you must okay actually first let me give you the overall details do t do okay do d u e t like t-shirt um, by fiber tails the yarn I'm using is Explore Knits Rockies DK in the colorway Snoqualmie. I love. And I'm knitting size one. I'm using US 5 or 3.75 millimeter needles to knit this. And okay, that's all those kinds of details. Okay, now one thing I've noticed because I haven't actually knit that many patterns from Fiber Tails, I might have just knit one other pattern. This might be the second pattern I've knit from her. And I, okay. One thing I found out I don't really like about patterns is when they tell you to knit, um, knit to a certain length. And okay, actually, let me, let me start over. So 
knitting bottom up, right? They patterns will say knit until whatever length. And that is fine. That's easy to do because you just measure as you go from your starting point. Now, when it came to knitting, um, there, okay. There's some increases that are done under this arm and I'll talk about that more in detail soon. But they, the instructions tell you to do these increases, which is like a set number of rows that you knit, right? Um, it's like increase on this row and then do a normal row and do that however many times. And it says, after working those increases, you should now, your length from your cast on should now be whatever length. And this is where the, the problem started because my length was way longer, not, I mean, maybe an inch longer than the pattern says I should be at this point. However, if you took, this is where I had to do some math. I was like, I had to work a certain number, right? If I follow the pattern, there's a certain number of rows that need to get, or rounds that needed to get knit. Um, and if I follow the gauge, that length plus the length I've al already knit did not equal the total length that the pattern said it should be at this point. It was a little confusing. And then to add on to that as well, I was like, I think it's fine. Whatever length I end up, that's fine. Um, because the increases were just for, um, it's actually done very cleverly. I really like how this is done. But on top of that, once I split, once you split for sleeves, I think most patterns will say, you know, split for sleeves and then knit until where you split until you knit or you count the length from where you split to where you knit to be a certain um, length. And this is going to be kind of like your armhole length. Um, but for this pattern, it says knit, you know, split and then knit until a length that is from your cast on. And I was like, that makes it really it's not super difficult, but it makes it less intuitive to know how long your armhole should be at this point because, again, it's easy math. You just minus what, you know, the pattern says it should be from the hem to the top of your armhole minus what it said it should be at the split of the armhole and you get what length it's supposed to be at the armhole from the split. But it was just, I'd rather the pattern just tell me from the split, knit until whatever length, not from the hem, knit until whatever length. Because if I did that and I followed the numbers and I wasn't paying attention to um, my gauge or if I was started to get a little off or if you decided that you wanted to increase the length of the body before you split for sleeves you're gonna have to do the math to figure out what length your armhole is supposed to be um, if you made length edits at the at the top at the or at the bottom but at the beginning of when you're knitting and so i thought that that was a little odd i don't like that i really would just rather you tell me how long to knit from the split of the armhole um but because, because of the issue of these increase rows being longer than the pattern says it should have been, I had to do, I had to do more math to figure out what the actual length of this armhole should be for me to knit. That might have been too long of an explanation to explain this problem, but I just, it just took me some time to figure this out. And I just would prefer to not have to do that for patterns. Um, but that is, you know, just something I've learned about what I prefer to, to be told about lengths and stuff in patterns. Um, so that was interesting. It all worked out in the end because I had to do some math, look at the gauge, look at my gauge, figure out that length. Um, and so it, it all worked out and it fits. I did try this on already and it fits, but yeah. Okay, and I did want to talk just a little bit about the increases for this underarm because I thought it was very 
clever for this drop shoulder and it's hard to see it because it is rolling in at the sides. But do you remember me talking about how Andrea Maori does her drop shoulders instead of just knitting straight from the body to the sleeve? She actually does, once you're at the underarm, Andrew Maori patterns, at least the ones I've done, you cast on stitches and so that sleeve kind of goes out and then you knit straight up. And so that gives you a little more sleeve to go over your shoulder versus just the width of the body of your sweater, right? Um, and I really like that. But the one annoying thing about doing that is before you start picking up for the sleeve, because you had to cast on stitches on both sides, you have to close it right at the underarm where it sticks out. For this one, there are increases being done. If I pull this out, this is the side and you can see that there are increases under this arm here for the sleeve. Right, you can see that curve, which is really nice, but there's no need to do any cast on, extra cast on stitches or to sew um, under the arm uh, with those extra cast on stitches because there were there's th this is done the shaping is done with increases I think you can kind of see that there so this is all done in the round um, on both sides of course for each arm I thought that that was really clever too and then you get this nice curve rather than kind of like a straight um, arm sleeve thing I thought that that was really nice. And actually what was really interesting too is um, these increases were actually right lifted increases and left lifted increases. They were the lifted increases um, that I've done before, but they're not normally done for the increases. I don't know what the other one is called, just a right increase, left increase. The one where you, most of the increases I've done and are said to do in patterns are the ones where you have to kind of pick up the in between the stitches like that ladder in between stitches but this one is where you actually pick one of the legs of the stitches either on the right or the left and so I don't do this one too often and so it's interesting that for this one that is what was the increase um, type to do for this one and what's funny is one of my new cast ons that is also the increase type done for that um, it's yeah really interesting that sometimes there's a te technique where I'm like oh I haven't done that in a while or yeah like I just haven't done that type of increase or that kind of decrease in a while and then I end up doing multiple patterns with that same thing so just thought I'd share I thought that, that was kind of fun um, but yeah okay so I mean this thing's almost done as you can see oh the last thing that I did work on for this was I didn't talk about this. This is like the best part, one of the best parts of this top. And the reason why I really wanted to make it was the crochet hem on this top. And so it it's I should have I said I was going to steam block this so it wouldn't roll up at the bottom. But I thought that if I had the crochet hem at the bottom that it wouldn't roll up as much. Which is true, but it's still rolling up and the yarn is kind of dark. Oh my gosh. So it's kind of hard to see this detail, but this is the crochet hem. It goes all the way around. It's this scalloped edging, and I think it is absolutely adorable. I love it so much. I did size down my crochet hook from what the pattern says, which is supposed to match your knitting needle um, size for the body, but my crochet also is just always loose, and so I did size down. Um, but this is what the scalloped edging looks like and I what I really like about it is that I could tell that it wasn't just the scalloped edging and like that technique to do the crochet scallop edging there was a little extra oh my gosh it was a little extra something like in the middle of these kind of like the fan shape a little here and Again, it's like such a small detail, but I thought that it was really cute. And of course, um, you know, the pattern says 
how to do that. And I was like, oh, okay, so there is more to it. There's actually four rows that you do of, or four rounds, I guess, of crochet that you do to make all of these details. And there is like this twisted stitch that happens. And I've never done that twisted stitch, I think, in crochet. So that was very cool. Um, I, I have done, I have crocheted before, nothing really kind of like extensive, but um, so this wasn't really difficult for me to do. I think if you haven't crocheted before, um, I would probably recommend maybe doing a practice swatch of this before doing it on your entire garment. Um, she does in the pattern have a link to a video of her explaining and doing the scallop edging. I will say I haven't watched it because I just read the instructions and I don't, unless I need it, I don't really like to watch videos too much. Um, unless I need it, of course. Um, so I can't say how good the video is, but there is one there and I think some people in the Ravelry project pages have said that it was very helpful because they haven't done crochet before. Um, but and I, okay, I don't know how to read crochet charts. I find them so confusing. I don't understand. However, they, I was able to pick out some pieces of information from reading the chart because just reading the instructions made some parts of this confusing. Like if you just read the crochet instructions, there are some um, sections where, or some rounds where you're supposed to, you know, like, I'm making this up, this is not one of the rows, probably not, but it's if you do like a single crochet, skip a stitch and single crochet or something. Um, it, maybe it's implied for crochet, but because I'm like, I do some crochet, but not too much, maybe I just like don't know, but like, actually, maybe it'll say single crochet, chain one, single crochet, but that chain one, it re in my head, it really should be like single crochet, chain one, skip one stitch, and then single crochet in the next one. If you don't crochet, I think that might be kind of confusing. If you do, let me know if it's actually implied that when you do kind of a chain one like that, that you're supposed to skip a stitch before you kind of go into your next stitch to do your single crochet. Um, but some of that I felt like was missing in the written out instructions. And so that's when the chart was helpful for me to kind of figure out. I had to use both the written and the chart to figure out how to do this. I'm probably making it sound not approachable and really hard to do, but it honest, I mean, it really, I didn't have to think about it too hard. I spent more time trying to figure out what length to knit my armhole than I did um, having to, you know, work out the scalp edging for crochet. So um, I may, I hope I didn't turn any of you off from making this if you um, saw it and thought it was cute, um, but I just want to put it out there because if it's something that I've encountered, I want to share all of my thoughts on a pattern with you all, so, um, but it's so cute. This scallop edging hem is so cute and it's just rolling up a bit because of the stockinette stitch, but it'll... It'll lay flat once I um, wash and block this. Okay, so all I have next to do is to finish up the I-cord edging for the neck and also for the armholes. And that's all I have to do. Um, the other next really cute detail is actually the I-cord that goes on the V-neck here, is that there will be enough to tie a bow. And so for me, the bow and the scallop edging hem is just like, make this top really cute and the reason why that I really wanted to make it so this should be done next week at least that's my plan and so we'll see we'll see see how that goes but it is it's just so cute and I'm really happy um, with how this is turning out and now it actually looks like a garment and not just like a blob so really nice to finally share um, Kind of like how this looks with you all right now okay i feel like i was talking about that one for a long time it's just i encountered some you know some issues with it so wanted to explain um through all of that okay 
Next up is my Bennett Sister Shawl by Lindsay Fowler. I did not make too much progress on this. However, because it is a kind of large shawl, it's fingering weight, I figured this is just kind of like my comfort in it. And so it's not something I feel like I need to power through to finish. It's just something I want to work on when I want something a little relaxing. Because right now it's just um, garter stitch increasing for the triangle. So this is what I have. The best part about this, I think, is the yarn I'm using. It is Coast to Coast Yarn Classic Sock. And eventually I will add on the Surrey Cloud, both in the same colorways, Milkweed. Amazing. Light pink and the best speckles ever. So cute and so pretty. Honestly, this yarn is like the best thing about, about the shawl. I love it. Um, this is my stitch marker from the last time. So, you know, just continuing to increase here. And this is a one size shawl, but I think you can, you know, increase to whatever stitch count you want. Actually, in the pattern, it says increase until about the stitch count, which I also thought was interesting that it says around the stitch count. So you can really kind of like play around with the sizing of this shawl, um, but it is one size. I'm using US six needles, 4.0 millimeter needles to knit this. And yeah, it's just, it's going well. I'm enjoying it. It's nice, love the yarn. And that's all I have to say. That's my quick update, very quick update for my Bennett sister shawl. Next up, I have two new cast-ons this week. Let me talk about this first one. Um, I love this one. This makes me so happy. I have another, I was like, I want to knit with some Surrey this week. So I started the Nebula top uh, by Andrea Mowry, and I am uh, going to knit the short sleeve version. There is a long sleeve version of this as well. But I think for this one and for this color, I think it would look very cute in the short sleeve. Um, let me hold up what I have. It's so happy, it's so cute, and I love it. Okay, the yarn I'm using is Explore Knits Surrey Alpaca Lace in the colorway Grapefruit. I'm holding two strands together for this because for the pattern, um, the yarn recommendation is like a DK weight Surrey, and usually for a lot of DK, or patterns that are a Surrey lace held together, it's kind of like a DK weight-ish kind of deal. So I thought two strands of Surrey lace would work out well for this pattern, and I think so far it's going pretty good. I am knitting size two to have a really nice oversized um, yeah, oversized size for this, and also the pattern um, sizing recommendations are quite large for positive ease. So I could have done size three, but I'm sticking to size two for now to see how I feel, because I think eventually I want to knit the long sleeve version of this as well. I am knitting with US 7, or 4.5 millimeter needles for this, and there is, okay, when I first saw this pattern, I was like, it looks like a Surrey version of the Weekender sweater uh, without some of the details. Like, it didn't have the slip stitch down the middle, um, but it had that ribbed kind of like um, shoulder at the top, and I mean, was that it? There's no pockets either, but that... It very much looked just like a Surrey version of the Weekender sweater, also by um, Andrew Mowry. But one thing I didn't know until I cast on, this is also worked bottom up. It seems like Andrew Mowry patterns are like almost all bottom up. Um, is that there are short rows at the hem so that it's kind of like a high low um, hem situation so that it is shorter in the front and longer in the back. And I love that. I love this kind of shaping for a hem, and I also love, you know, a split hem. I love a high-low split hem. There's just something about it that looks really cute, and so this made me very happy to to see that this is the shaping um, for 
um, this top. And so I thought that was very cute. It did make knitting this feel like it's going to be a long, long knitting. It's a lot, lot of short rows. Um, but yeah, this is how it's looking. It's looking so cute and fluffy. And Grapefruit on Surrey is just so cute. It looks summery. I know it is like two strands of Surrey held together. Like this doesn't seem ideal for a hot summer day. But who knows? Maybe if it's like a cooler summer day that this would be um, really nice to wear. But other, like, I mean, it's gonna be cute. And so I just like had to do it. Also because um, me and my Seattle Knit Group, uh, Pacific Knit West Group, um, last year at the um, Explore Knit Summer Market, we all, or a lot of us, got some grapefruit yarn and we all wanted to make something with it. And then I was a crazy person and I knit with my, I had, I, I love this color so much. And so I got it on multiple bases. One of them was fingering weight, the Denali sock base, and I knit um, a tank top for flock um, last year um, because I really, 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 really wanted it. So I already finished my top for this group knit. We're all, you know, going to knit with this colorway, and I think I might have been the first one to finish a top. But I think um, some of us are starting to knit with theirs um, now for maybe flock this year and I didn't want to be left out even though I are already finished mine's last year and so I decided to I was like well I have some Surrey and so I'll cast on this top with the grapefruit so that I can also be knitting with the grapefruit along with my friends um, so yeah this is this is my Surrey grapefruit top it's so cute it's so 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 cute because I feel like the pink is like bright and summery but it's not like really bright like it doesn't like hurt my eyes it's just like cute it's like a cute bright I guess all bright colors are pretty cute but this one doesn't hurt my eyes it's just it's very pleasant and pink and peachy it's grapefruit grapefruity so cute and also yeah I just like wanted to I have a lot of Surrey sweater quantities and so I was like it's kind of nice to kind of like have one on my needles right now just to kind of like enjoy um my stash i want to say you know i want to use up my stash but i don't mean it in like a oh, i just got to use it up i'm like i'm enjoying it but i have a lot of it so i want to like start making stuff with all of my really really pretty surrey uh so this is again the nebula i am almost close i think i have a couple more inches to knit of the body before i can split for sleeves but it might go pretty fast um, once I split for sleeves. So that's pretty exciting. Okay, and then my last new cast on for this week is, sorry, it's buried under all of my other projects. Okay, this one kind of, is a project that has like two, di this pattern has two different names. Uh, I bought this pattern a while ago, maybe last year when it was on sale on the Sorella site. And so I think that when you buy this pattern, it is on the Sorella site. But this was part of like, I don't know if she's doing this anymore. I haven't seen anything really recently, but I also have been following too closely. Um, this was when she had like different pattern designers do like collaborations with her um, and for um, her to have patterns. Sorella is selling patterns um, that were made by other designers, but it's like in like a partnership, um, with other designers. So the format and everything is Sorella, but of course the designers get their name and their credit on it, um, for the pattern itself because it is their pattern, but it is sold on the Sorella site. And I think this one went on sale at some point for a dollar. I'm pretty sure it was one dollar and I was like, I want it and so I got it back then and I just haven't knit it and when I was thinking about things to cast on really also want to try and actually work on projects that I have the pattern and haven't knit yet and so I was looking through my Ravelry library and I saw this pattern and I was like it's a tank top 
Uh, so it's great for summer, which is right now. And I was like, looking through my stash, found a color I thought would look cute, and I cast on. So this is the Flaneur top. I'm definitely saying that wrong. On the Sorella site, this is where it gets a little confusing. On the Sorella site, it is called the Flaneur top. But on Ravelry, where you can, I the link that I have for the pattern in the description is the Ravelry page. It is called the Date Night Top. It is by the Wildberry Creative. Um, her name is Isabella, I believe. And um, so when you go onto the Ravelry page for this pattern, um, it has all the details. When you click on the link to buy the pattern, it takes you to the Sorella website. So it's slightly confusing, especially with the naming. Um, so I'm just going to give you both names just in case you um, see one or the other. So uh, the pattern, the design, it is a tank top. It's a very like simple, it's like a normal scoop neck. It's not a V-neck um, tank top, but, and it's stockinette, fingering weight yarn, but the straps are a bit wide, like they're not spaghetti straps, they're a bit of a wider strap, and there's like a little bit of a ruffle sleeve. Like it's not really long sleeve, but it's just kind of like on the edge of the sleeves, there's just like a small ruffle. And I thought that, that was really cute, um, something to add to just kind of like a plain tank top. And so, yeah, here's the start of it. It is worked top down. And I find tank tops work top down are really annoying. <laughs> until you join um, under the arm because you just have so many small little pieces. Just kind of work a small strap and you have to cut your yarn. Work on another small strap and cut the yarn and you know, before you join them all together. But I am joined maybe like one row under the arm right now. So again, it doesn't really look like much, but here is the top. Oh, I am knitting size extra small. I'm using US 6 needles or 4.0 millimeter needles to knit this. And I think what's really fun, you may be wondering, because I haven't mentioned it yet, is what yarn am I using? I am using Woolberry Fiber Co. Berry Merino in the colorway Let's Go Party. So it's this really, um, so this was like the Woolberry version of a Barbie pink color. And so I thought that that was really cute and Kind of like the perfect color vibe to go with the shirt like a tank top that has like a little ruffle and so yeah i thought that that would be cute and just seeing part of it knit up already yeah i think it's going to um, be really nice and yeah i think that this color is supposed to be like it was a tonal color or does she call them semi solids um for one of the collective months it might have been last year um, but it is really kind of turning out i wouldn't i don't think i would call this a variegated you know because it is kind of just like different um light and dark of the same color but it is kind of coming out a lot more like you can tell that there is the light and dark in the color. Um, that doesn't bother me too much. I just thought it was like, oh, I it's less solid um, of a color knit up than I thought it would be. Um, so yeah, but I do like it and I think it's going to work really nice for this, this pattern. So yeah, that is my last um, new cast on for this week. And then I have some spinning some spinning updates because last weekend was the start of Tour de Fleece and I'm not doing anything really official this year. It is my first Tour de Fleece or first year that I can participate because I wasn't spinning last year during Tour de Fleece. Um, but yeah, I'm not doing anything official for it. I just, my own personal goal for it. And it, again, if I don't do it, it's also fine. Um, but I was like, oh, I want to see if I could just spin a little bit every day um, during the event and this week I did spin a little every day 
There were a couple of days I got close to not spinning at all, but I was like, no, I'm just let me just spin a little bit, and then I would end up spinning for maybe like half an hour. Um, so I did get some spinning done, and I have been working on my spin for the Traveler Shawl by Andrea Murray. I wanted to spin um, three different braids from Little Fiber Co. All Rambouillet, just different colorways, three different colorways, so I can do a three ply. And I have been spinning on Eclipse, the colorway Eclipse, which is more of a tonal colorway. It's this dark brown and it's really really pretty i am not done with it yet but i'm very very close to finishing this and because i'm very close and i think that i'm going to ply this coming week um i wanted to show you all my three bobbins um before i apply them so that you can see um yeah just what they look like as singles before i apply them all together um i have blood moon which is this other darker colorway but this one's a more variegated dark colorway and then i have sunset vibes which is this pink peach purple colorway and then um eclipse which is more dark tono brown than um blood moon here so i want to apply all of these together and it's going to be interesting i haven't applied something with such contrasting colors um I'm worried it's going to look bad but I guess what I will do while I'm plying I will see the final yarn um and if I absolutely hate it I might stop and then just I don't know just figure out what else I'm going to do um but otherwise my plan is to just keep going and to finish plying all of this and to do a sample swatch. Um, yeah, I just have no idea how this is going to turn out. I'm hoping it turns out cute. But um, yeah, these are three bobbins and I'm nervous, but I'm excited to start applying this up. So we'll see, my plan is to do that this week. And so uh, yeah, I did wanna show it to you all like this. First. This is what it looks like, all individually um, spun up as singles. So yeah, it's looking really good. I've been enjoying the spinning. I've been using my ladybug, and so all three of my ladybug bobbins are filled with fiber um, right now. And so I will be applying this on my electric eel wheel. Wheel. Yeah, because those bobbins are huge. Okay. And then, I think, yeah, did I mention all my plans? I want to make a traveler shawl with that as long as all of that yarn comes out and I get some good yardage on that. Um, oh, I did want to mention just also for details, because I am not filming this spin for a spin with me kind of video. Um, the way that I split up my fiber for this, I wasn't too concerned about the color placement of it, but... For all three braids, I did the exact same thing. I just split the braid lengthwise into four and then spun those each one after the other. And that's it, just something um, pretty simple. So yeah, we'll see. Just have to wait and see how that, um, how that turned out. So maybe that'll happen um, this coming week. Okay, next up, I did say I wanted to wash and block this finished sample spin um from yarn jam and this is um yarn that or fiber that is the merino rambouillet base fiber base from yarn jam um the tweed merino rambouillet um sample fiber i got from her and last week i finished spinning it and plying i just didn't wash it and so now it's washed and it's dried and it's looking really cute. It's feeling really soft and squishy and good. Um, and I love skeins that look like this. Super, super cute. I think that it did kind of look like it bloomed a little bit. Um, just looks cute and, and a little fluff. 
a lo little poof, um, which is um, really cute. <laughs> I just think these little fiber things are just so cute. Um, but yeah, it's feeling like it'll be nice and bouncy, but not like, you know, not crazy. Just like a really great fiber. Like I've been really liking Rambouillet and this, this um, fiber, which is Rambouillet, Merino Rambouillet, it's just like, I don't know, the best of both worlds, I think. So, yeah, sample skein is good. And, again, the, um, this is a tweed version of that base. Um, and so there are, like, little specks here and there, but it really isn't, like, too crazy. The tweed is a color colored tweed, though. So it's not, like, the black flex. It's colored. So there's green, um, yellow, kind of a golden yellow, and a red. There's the green. But yeah, I don't think it would it's easy to really show up in the skein here unless you knit it up. So that should be interesting. Um, okay, speaking of yarn jam and the reason why I have my my sample spin, my sample fiber there is because, and I've mentioned this in the last video, but I have a few more details this week that I want to share with you all, which I will continue to share um, if not probably not every podcast video, but just leading up until the release of this collection from Yarn Jam. And let me just pull up my notes here. Okay, so Yarn Jam is doing a podcaster collection of fiber this coming September. And as I've um, maybe briefly mentioned in last week's video, um, this collection is a collection of YouTube podcasters who also spin and that Trisha watches and enjoys and she reached out to all of us to ask if we want to be part of this fiber collection where each of us could kind of basically design a colorway of fiber with her and for her to release um, in this collection and I thought that, that was really really fun and it's so exciting to be a part of this group this collection um, everyone is amazing I watch everyone's podcast and so it's really cool to just kind of like know each other and just um have that group and friendship and everyone has I think very wide variety of color choices and the colors that we like and so I think you will probably find a colorway that you like from this collection and um yeah, here's a couple more details, and I will also remind you all when it gets closer to the date as well, but just in case you want to do some early planning for this, um, the launch date for this collection is scheduled for Friday, September 6th at noon Eastern time, and um, there will be a discount code for all of you to get 15% off, and I will, of course, share that um, with you all when it gets closer as well um it's you know it's not a secret i just want to make sure you all know that that's coming up for planning but also want to keep reminding you when it comes close because i think it's, it's a great collection um and yeah so let's see um okay there will be uh two bases of fiber um to choose from for all of these colorways there is the plain marine, merino rambouillet, and then there's also the confetti tweed merino rambouillet, which is the base that I did the sample spin, where it has the colorful tweed, um, which we were um, just told from Trisha that it's going to actually be slightly different. The tweed base is just slightly different from the one that she gave us the sample fiber with. Um, the one that's going to be in the collection is going to have some blue tweed in them as well um in addition to the gold green and red from the samples that she gave us so that's super fun i think that that will just make it even better um so yeah both bases that will be available is the merino rambouillet and one is plain and one will have some colorful fun tweed in it and um let's see there will be five one two three four five five different colorways, five different podcasters that are part of this collection. And um, I think some of us have already started to talk about it. If you watch them, you've probably heard 
um, them talk about this as well. And yeah, I just want to, I don't want to overwhelm you with too much information about this collection. We have a lot of time or a good amount of time until this collection comes out. So I want to just kind of like throw out tidbits here and there about this collection um, leading up to the release. I think it'd be more fun that way. So there are five um, podcasters in this collection and yeah, they'll be slowly, I think, starting to talk about their fiber as they get it. And I'm bringing this all up because I finally got my fiber in the mail. And I'm so excited to show you this colorway because it is absolutely perfect. I love it. It feels very me um, and all the things. Oh, it's just so good. I got this. Okay, let me just show it to you and then I'll talk about it so you have fun fiber colors to look at. Are you ready? I have no words besides I love it and it's so pretty and it's so cute um this is the plain merino rambouillet base in the airy knits colorway um it's just so good I feel like it's it has all the colors that I've been loving recently so yes pink is like my absolute favorite color but I have been loving green and also those golden yellow colors recently as well. And so having all three of those different colors in this braid is just like perfect. It has just like that overall really cute pastel-y kind of color vibe to it. And I'm really happy with it. This base is so fluffy and squishy. You can just see it in this braid, like you can see that fluff and that squish. It's such a great fiber base. This might be like my new favorite thing. I just need to knit something with it, which is will happen soon because I have these braids now. Um, but yeah, I mean, Merino Rambouillet. It's a great, oh, it's so good. And I don't know what else to say besides is perfect. Trisha, you did such a great job. It's been so fun uh, working with you to make these colors. I cannot wait to see everyone's colors um, for this collection. It's going to be so good. It's such a good collection. Um, and oh, I do need to show you the label in the back because it has my name on it. If it'll focus, Airy Knits. Um, oh, it's just so crazy to have something that has uh, my name on it. Um, and a QR code to the YouTube podcast. It's just so cool. Um, yeah, what a great collaboration. I So I got two um, braids of this. My plan is to make um, the pressed flowers shawl with this as my contrast color because I think this color these colors for the flowers in the pressed flower shawl will be so cute. I love my pressed flowers cardigan and so I think in the shawl version it's going to just look amazing with these really pastel um, colors. It's just like my little my little fiber baby. It's just so cute. Um, so yeah I will Again, as I've said before, continue to share more information about this collection. And I can't wait for you to all see the other colorways that will be in this collection as well. So, yeah, really exciting. Um, again, this collection launch date is planned for September 6th, um, which is a Friday. And there will be a discount code of 15% off. So keep an eye out for that as well. And, yeah, Yarn Jam fiber. It's so good. I can't wait. Okay, here's the thing. I am so excited to spin with this, but at the same time, it looks so cute like this that I also don't want to spin with it. But I want to spin with it. I feel like that that has been the trouble with me for a lot of really pretty colors. It's just like, but I like how it looks like this. Um, so... I'm definitely going to take a bajillion pictures 
of the fiber before I um, spin with it, just so I have the memories of a really cute um, fluff braid like this. So, eee, so exciting. Okay, so that is like my big, my big reveal of for the podcast episode this week. Again, thank you so much, Trisha from Yarn Jam, um, for making this collection. I am also so happy to be a part of it and it's so exciting. It's so fun. I love the fiber and I can't wait for all of you to also see all the colors, see all the podcasters, um, kind of like what they envision their colors to be in fiber form um, and that we can all spin with all of these amazing colors um, together. Yeah. Okay. So I think that now and I can't top that for this podcast episode. That was like the big announcement, the big reveal of the Airy Knits colorway for um, Yarn Jam. So I will end the podcast episode here um, now. And yeah, I have a lot of exciting things planned. I feel like very soon for spinning, the fiber, all of my knitting projects. And yeah, it's just, it's a good time. It's summer, it's getting hot, feels like maybe I wouldn't be knitting so much, but I feel it like the opposite. I feel like I just want to knit even more. So yeah, I hope that you are all doing well. I hope you're getting as much crafting time as you want um, in your free time. And feel free to let me know in the comments down below what you're working on as you're listening or watching this podcast. Thank you, as always, so, so much for watching this podcast. I am so happy to be a part of this knitting podcast community. It's been so fun, and I love sharing with you all what I've been working on and to hear about what you all are also working on. So thank you for that. Thank you for watching. I hope you all have a great day and a great week, and I'll see you all in next week's video. Bye.